I found a very important game that I want to share with you today. It's a game between Vladimir Kramnik versus Peter, uh, Peter Leko. Uh, not too many people know that Leko was actually uh, almost, he was almost going to win the World Championship in 2004. In the final round, the 14th game, all he needed to do is make a draw. He was winning the match. So if he had made a draw, he would have won the match. And the rules were a little bit different back then. Uh, the, you had to win the match against the champion to actually win the title. So the match ended a draw, 7-7, and uh, Kramnik retained his title. They didn't have to play any playoffs, which was kind of strange, and people felt it was unfair. So that's why they, I think, changed the rules in 2006. So Leko, at this, this is game 14, so they played 13 games. Leko uh, is winning the match by 7-6. All he has to do here to make a draw with Black, and he's a world champion. And this happened to many, many players. They came so close, like Schlechter. You know, he was so close to win a, become world champion. He lost to Steinitz in the last game. And uh, many, many, David Bronstein was very close. And uh, now we see another example, Leko. Could have been a world champion, very close. He was actually playing really well in this match, and uh, just the nerves. Kramnik just was stronger at the end. So, that's why I want to show you a game and uh, show you how you need to play when you need to win a game must win situation. So here white must play for a win and he chose e4. c6. In that match Leko was successful with Karokan, so no difference. And e5. This is the most principled move. With, if you don't play this move that means you're not going for the most principled lines. And uh, Leko you know, was probably expecting this because he was playing Karo Khan a lot in that match and Kramnik uh, decided to take him on this. So bishop f5, h4. Right away we see a very aggressive approach by Kramnik. He needs to win this game. A lot of these lines are very positional and not so clear how you're going to get advantage there. So here he decided to play this aggressive move h4 which I have personally faced myself. A uh, very strong French grandmaster, Vachela Graf, played against me this line. So h6, I like this move for black. It's a good move. This move was also played by Anand in a game against Alexei Shirov. You can look at that game. That's a very nice win for black in that line. And now he plays g4, attacking the bishop. The bishop needs to move here and here you have to go to d7 and that's the idea because if you go back to h7 then it's very unpleasant move is e6 creating weaknesses and bishop d3 bishop d3 and after bishop d3 uh, there are some problems as you can see on the light squares here so that's why um, black usually plays, if they play already h6, they're going to go bishop d7. Knight d2. And here, um, Leko played the move c5, which is very typical for this position because you want to try to put some pressure in the center and also activate your knight. And now he took d takes c5. Right away uh, Kramnik uh, managed to get something uh, complex and to, to kind of take Leko away from all the theoretical work because he was very well prepared. In all the theoretical lines they would go to, Leko was absolutely fine. And he, he won in a marshal with Black uh, in a very famous game. So he was very, uh, very prepared for this match. So that's why now he had to uh, play moves on his own. Um, and here he plays e6. And this is the first uh, dubious move in this position. It's better in this position to play knight c6, attacking the central pawn, f4, e6. And bishop c5, knight c5, queen a5 check, and I think this position is uh, probably equal. Black will go knight g7 and maybe try to play h5 to get that f5 square here. 
So this was, uh, I think, a better way to play. Uh, another interesting line here is if instead of f4, knight b3 is played, which I think is probably not likely because the central pawn is weak, so knight takes e5. Queen takes d5, bishop g4. It's a very sharp line because the knight cannot be taken because of which move? Queen d1 checkmate. Very good. So that's why, um, you know, there's some bishop b5 check, knight c6. Some very uh, unbalanced position. White has some extra pawns, but uh, one extra pawn, but black has two bishops. So this is still uh, absolutely fine for black because of the bishop is very strong. But he played e6. And now you need to protect your c5 pawn. And you don't really want to push b4 because b4, a5, and there could be some some weaknesses. So what what else white can try to do to protect it, Martin? Knight to b3, correct. Nice move, protecting the pawn. That's a very good move. You protect the pawn, and also you're getting ready to develop your bishop. Now bishop takes c5. The typical idea. Knight takes c5 and queen a5 check. This is this idea is kind of known. So black loses his dark square bishop, but gets the pawn back. And now knight f3. Played by Kramnik. He has two bishops and a little bit of space advantage as well. So it's a very interesting uh, playable position. So he goes knight e7. And now dubious move played by Kramnik, bishop d3. As you can see, this game was so crucial that both players are nervous because one player just needs a draw. Just to make a draw in this game, he's a world champion. And another player needs to win no matter what. Otherwise, he loses his title. So it doesn't get bigger than this. So whenever you see a situation like this, where one game can decide everything, it's the players get really nervous. And that's why you see, like, in the early stages of the game, they start making some inaccurate moves. So it's, it's clear that in this position, white should put the pawn on h5 here. Because that way they will control the g6 square, and also they take away the h5 idea for, for black. And then he can follow it up with bishop d3. So this is a typical idea, very useful move to play. But instead he plays bishop d3, and now... In some point, maybe black could have also played the h5. So first knight c6, which is normal. Bishop e3, attacking the queen. Queen a5, d a5. and now he played queen d2. If queen c2, just rook c8 is coming. So he played queen d2. And now, right here, um, knight g6 was played and uh, which is a fine move here, but very interesting move now Black has here. Let's try to think about it and try to see what move Black can really play here to create some complications. If Leko played this move, it would have been a different game. The rest of the game was kind of passive and he was just defending. But if he had played this move, he would have had some more activity and I think better chances to hold this game and become a world champion. So let's think about it for a second. What black can do here? Now raise your hand if you have the idea. <coughs> or if you think you see something interesting to get active. That's the idea here. Somehow you want to get some activities here. He played knight g6, which is normal. But what else you can do, Martin? Uh, knight g6. Knight g6, yeah, that's what he played. That's a very normal move, and that's what, that's what happened. Knight g6 was played. But then white was a little bit better after. So that's why I'm thinking there may be something else, yes? Uh, maybe d4. d4, okay, very nice. Yeah, let's take a look at d4. It's a very interesting move. <coughs> It looks like just sacrificing a pawn, but actually you get some really nice control of the light squares. So, first of all, if he takes with a knight, then his e5 pawn is weak. If he takes with the bishop, then you take on d4, 
and I think there's some problems. You cannot take with the knight, your e5 pawn drops. If you take with the pawn, I think uh, some queen d5 ideas. Bishop c6, and black is very active, okay? So that's why he has to play uh, c takes d4. And I think this position is, uh, I, I kind of um, like this position uh, for black because he has a very uh, clear plan. Just all he needs to do is just to play for the light squares. So for example, one idea that comes to mind is knight before here, threatening to take on e4. And if bishop c6, just uh, bishop e4, just bishop c6. Exchanging. Knight comes in on c6, queen d5 idea. The position is place by itself, so that's why this would have been a much easier way to play. Even though you're down a pawn, but it's just your moves are so much easier to make, which makes it easier to play. So, but that didn't happen, and uh, so he played. Uh, yeah, d4 is a tough move to play. I mean, if you if you need to make a draw, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's you know, it's a tough move to play. But it's 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 a type of move that will help you to make that draw much easier. You know, because you know we all know if you need to play for a, you need to make a draw, you play for a win. If you play for a draw, this was a, he played for a draw. That's why he played for a draw in this game. And then, as we know, if you just play for a draw, you you're likely gonna lose. But if you just play normal, you play for a win, like you play in a normal situations. You know your chances are much higher uh, to succeed. So knight g6 is played. Now e5 pawn is hanging. So bishop d4 is forced. And now he he's getting ready to play h5. So knight d4 yeah this is interesting but it leads to a end game that is very close to equality but slightly passive so again maybe it wouldn't make sense to play queen uh, to c7 put some pressure on e5 queen, e queen to e3 take on d4 uh, pawn takes queen b6 play this position with the queens on the board and some bishop b5 ideas typical for you know French defense we know to exchange so it would have been uh, interesting to see how this would have worked out and if queen takes you just go back 97 knight c6 I mean maybe white is very slightly better here but not much this was another way to play but Leko just wanted to simplify and he thought again queen b6 is playable move here I probably would like this a little bit more, just a little bit more active. But he just he just thought, all I need is a draw, and I play good endgame, I should be able to hold this. But it's not so easy, because Kramnik is one of the best technicians, and uh, the space advantage was very annoying. So this is only slightly better. Only slightly better, and you know, usually positions like this, if black plays perfectly, he will make a draw. But it's very difficult to play like so accurately under that circumstances that I mentioned because it's just uh, he's just every move every move could be crucial now and right away he makes a mistake knight f4 he tries to be active but instead he should have just stayed put knight e7 put the knight on c6 then f6 try to get contraplay it's not easy for white to win this kind of position because black doesn't have essentially any weaknesses so when you don't have weaknesses, when opponent doesn't have weaknesses, it's very hard to win. Because, you know, how to get to the weaknesses. So, and not easy to create one either. It's just a space. So this is how he should have played. But instead he opt for knight f4. And now rook ac1. Immediately we see some problems now with the c file. Now rook is trying to come to the seventh rank. And we know that rook shouldn't come to the seventh rank because that's going to be a problem. So now he plays h5. Trying to create some counterplay here. If knight takes d3, it's passive. King takes. Bishop b5 check, king e3, king e7. This is really passive. This, this is not a way to make a draw. Now he will just he will just continue advancing and 
yeah, this is a very, very, very difficult position. F5 is coming, F6 is coming. So white has a plan. Black doesn't have any contraplay for it. So that's why it's difficult for him to do anything. So that's why um, he played H5, trying to get some, some activity. Rook G1. If captures, he wants to take back with the rook. Bishop C6. Trying to block the C file. Another alter there are a lot of alternatives here, but I think all of them are worse. So rook c8, just take, take, pawn takes pawn, g7 is hanging, king e3 and knight on the rim. We know it's not very good. And yeah, this is uh, knight is trapped. Yeah, this is technically lost. Knight on f6. Just winning because h5 pawn. I mean, you don't you don't need to get to this position. When you see a position like this, knight on f6, rook on h6, you don't need to calculate. This kind of position is going to be one because knight is on f6 is very powerful. So um, so rook c8 not going to work. If knight h3, he didn't try this. Just rook g3 attacking the knight. He takes the idea just to take win the g7 pawn and try to push the h pawn all the way down. So that's the problem. You, you know, you're going to lose your g7 pawn here, likely, and then he's going to have an outside pass pawn on h4 that is simply going to march. Just push, push, push. Outside pass pawn is very strong. We know that in this kind of end games, because that will give you a very clear plan of advancing it. So that's why Leko didn't want to do it. So he played bishop c6. Eh, not the best looking move. I mean, just to keep the bishop like that passively to block the c file, but. That's that's what he has. H6, that's the plan to open up the G file. Knight H5. Another idea is King F8, but uh, it's still still unpleasant for Black. So he took back with the knight, and now B4. Kramnik sees that he has the initiative, so he wants to increase the pressure. Now he wants to play B5, try to knock off the bishop here, and then go rook C7, activate the rook on a seventh rank. So now it goes a6, preventing it. a4. He doesn't mind sacrificing a pawn. That's the kind of move that you want to find. Because he understands that activating the rook on a 7th rank is much more valuable than just uh, trying to do anything else here. Who would have played the move a4, you think, in this position, in a real tournament game? With a lot of things on the line here. Who would have done this bold pawn sacrifice? to get to the C file. Anyone, no? Did you thought about it? No? Because it looks like when you get to the seventh rank, you play bishop c6. And, you know, Let's see. Bishop c6, yeah. Rook c7. Rook on a seventh, we know. It's worth a pawn. We know that, right? A rook on a seventh in endgame is worth a pawn. And now look, just he keeps the bishop. He keeps the bishop first. And then he comes in. Extremely unpleasant position to defend. I mean, knight f7 is now coming, and it's going to be very difficult to do anything. And if you play this move, it will be followed by which move here? Yes. G c1, absolutely correct. Now, if it takes, you take back with this, and you still have a powerful rook on a 7th rank. Okay? Very good, Martin. That was a good move. Because you have a strong rook on a 7th rank, you want to keep it there, okay? You want to bring the other one. So, uh, he didn't do that. Yes, question? So, what does he bishop c6? A bishop c6 where? Here? Yeah. Uh, bishop c6 after knight g5, I think it's pretty bad. You can defend f7. It's defenseless. Now, because if you go rook to f8, who is going to find a winning tactic here? Very quickly. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Or? No, Martin. Okay, again you found it, correct. Sacrificing the knight. Now he takes. Take back or... or Pin it to win it, right? Yeah. 
Pin it to win it, remember. What type of pin? Absolute pin, right? Absolute. Absolute pin is very powerful. You win immediately, okay? Always have to look for this kind of ideas, tactics, okay? It's an end game. Don't only think that you have to just slowly improve the position. When there are good opportunities, you go for it. You don't hesitate, okay? So... That's sweet. Yeah. You see, you see, you have to, in order to play four, you have to see... Yes, you have to calculate. You have to calculate. I absolutely agree with you, yes. But that's not so difficult because one, I mean, relatively, two, I mean, three, and four. Yeah, I mean, at that, at the very high level, I mean, you know, you guys can calculate two for them. It's, it's not like it's, you know, the moves are pretty natural. I mean, you get the rook in, you get the knight in. When you got so much pressure on an opponent, what you got to do is now start to look for tactical ideas that will allow you to break through. Do you understand that part? When you have so much pressure and pieces are very active, you have to try to win with the concrete ideas. You cannot just enjoy the position forever because then, you know, your opponent will probably find some kind of defense. So in some point, you have to take some concrete measures in order to break through. Clear? Okay. So, um, A4 was very powerful. So Leko now, he realizes that uh, this is very tough. So he found a pretty decent defense with the king d8 here. Knight g5, so he tucks in the bishop back on e8 just to defend. Mm -hmm. But as you can see, by just optically, by looking at the position, you can tell now how big is the white's advantage. Let's evaluate here. Let's pause for a second here, and I want you guys to think for two minutes here and try to see how big is white's advantage here. We know white has advantage. Is it slightly? Is it big or is it winning? When you're ready, just raise your hand and uh, we can discuss. Yes, in the back. I think it's a huge advantage. If I count the squares that black could actually move a piece to right now, I barely get past one hand. Uh, well, that's actually a very good point. That's another way of determining who has the advantage. In a position like this, when one player has advanced his pawn so much, controls so much space, it, it, Block has very few moves on the board that he can actually make here. You know, he's almost like getting to the point where he's going to be a suksawang because it's just he's not going to have moves to move anymore. So that's why, that's another way of uh, looking at how big is the advantage. It, it's, you mentioned, you say big or winning or? It's huge. It's huge. Okay. So it's huge. Yeah, that's uh, close to be winning, I guess. His knight is better, his bishop is, white's knight is better, his bishop is better, and both works. Another very, another very good point that we need to understand and remember when we are trying to evaluate the position, First thing we can also do is just look at the pieces and compare. Let's compare the knights. Whose knight is better? This knight on g5 or the knight on h5? It's pretty clear, right? His knight is on the rim, and it's not good because no, not too many squares. One square he has, one square to go to f4, and if you go king e3, he's not going to have that either. So that's out of question. Let's compare the bishops. The bishop on d3, bishop on e8. I think the roles are pretty different, yeah? This bishop is active, mm -hmm. looking for some tactics, mm -hmm. and this bishop is just parked here defending the pawn on f7. So that's clear. Let's get to the rooks now. Let's compare the rook on c1 with the rook on a8. Big difference. So white rooks are connected, which is... Uh, which is another very important idea, very good point right there. Rooks are connected. When the rooks are connected, that means you're doing good. When your rooks are not connected, that's a sign of you not doing good. Actually, very you know, it's very simple. But yeah, that's that's you know, majority of the cases in uh, chess. Yeah, you will find yourself in trouble when your king is in the middle blocking your connection of your rooks. So the rook on a8 is pretty passive here, and rook on h8 is doing some kind of defensive role here. Rook on g1 is also uh, has got a lot more opportunities to go around and try to break through. Okay. Okay, so we have some nice uh, possibilities here. So, um, but now he goes um, b5. Mm -hmm. I actually would have liked king e3, you know. I think this is interesting, but he didn't want to deal with g6. And then some knight g7 type of uh, rook c8. Um, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, but this is just... Yeah. I mean, not, not that clear. White, white still has a very big advantage here, but I guess Block is getting a little bit of activity. So he didn't want this. So he, he went for a more concrete approach with uh, b5. Uh, so knight f4 again, second dubious move and same move. Twice he played knight f4 in this game, both occasions turned out to be a, a dubious moves. So it's better to stay put, take and b6. That's, that's a good move to control the c5 square. And if king e3, rook a7, I assume this is some type of computer defense here Block is trying to put up here. Uh, and uh, and looks like he might be able to. It looks hopeless, but uh, knight is coming to f5, which is a which is a huge improvement. Uh, white is still ahead, but it's not trivial yet the victory. So that's why um, he should have played this. So he played uh, knight. No, he played knight f4 here. And now, what is the correct move here now for black? He missed the moment, and this was the move that might have cost him the title. I mean, no guarantee that Leko would hold the previous position, but at least after the, the particular move, I feel like position is hopeless. Yes? Absolutely B6. Double exclamation mark now, and White is winning. Rook is coming to the seventh rank. I can't believe he missed that. That's, a, that, that's what he missed, you know? And that's what cost him. Now, Rook on the seventh, it's game over here. When this Rook lands on here, this is gonna hang, this pawn is gonna hang everything. The whole, entire position is gonna collapse. I think this was like a shock for him when Kramnik played this because he just, he just completely forgot about the Rook C7 threat again. Uh, rook c8, uh, well, he played knight d3, but rook c8 as well, I think, fails to which idea? Rook Correct. Rook on a 7, and we know when rook was on c7, good things will happen for you. So you're just winning here. So now he had to play knight takes d3. Yes, Martin? Um, how about bishop? Bishop c6, knight f7, and you lose your rook. So that's why bishop has to stay here. So take, takes, rook c8 now, trying to exchange the pair of rooks. I mean, rook c7 is coming, so he's gotta do that. So what are we gonna do? Take, take, rook to c1, rook c7 lands, we know what's happening. Game is over, right? So he has to go bishop c6. He cannot allow the move bishop c8, bishop, uh, rook to c7. So now? Knight takes, absolutely. The pawn on b6 is playing a huge role here. Continue. Mm. Excellent. And now, knight on d6 is very, very powerful. Once you can activate your rook, this game will be over, right? Okay. Rook g1, attacking the weak pawn. Rook h3, check. If he has a light square bishop, he has a light square bishop. So um, I was thinking actually, uh, king d2 is probably the same thing, but he opt for the king e2. It doesn't really matter, I think, here. Rook g7, rook a4. And now, what is the plan now? King on d2, I think, is also another playable idea. He, he's maybe thinking maybe to activate the king, but here, what's the breakthrough idea? Breaking. Yeah, you need to make a break here, because if you take on b7, there's some chances here, because you lose a d4 pawn. You need to create a pass pawn, very quickly. F4, F4 correct. Because now if he takes f5, he takes push. Now you're threatening to go e7 and queen. So he has to play this move only. Move, take, take, and here. This wins the game because you're threatening to sacrifice. Let's say he plays here, sacrifice, he takes, push. He comes here, push. Even though he has two pawns, but you prevail here, you're gonna queen first and win this game. So, 
<laughs> very strong idea again, f4. Now he's just just all around very strong play by Kramnik, very energetic. It just uh, to keeping the pressure on. So he's uh, losing now. So check, king f3. That's why he went king e2, I guess, because now he wants to activate his king. King to g4. Rook to d3, attacking the pawn. F5, trying to break through. Anyway, that's the idea, right? Check, takes, and now? King F6 first. See, you don't want to take a pawn like this because pawn like this is actually an excellent shield, okay, for you, that he cannot give you checks from. So that's why you want to get in there now. His own pawn is now creating problem and you just want to push. Mm. So he goes here, proposing the exchange. Of course, we don't want to exchange rooks, yeah? Rook c7. Now, are you thinking about e6 and rook c8? Just announce the checkmate. So he goes here. Don't rush now. Forced mate. Checkmate in three. Checkmate in three. Let's see. Who is going to find it? Yeah, when you have a position like this, sometimes it's kind of tricky to find a mate because you you think everything is winning, but actually you just need to just find a mate. Uh, knight, f7 knight f7 check, and he resigned, and Kramnik is the world champion again, due to a little bit of a strange rule that 7-7 seven, seven champion retains the title. Should have been a playoff in my opinion, that would have been more fair, but yeah, check. Check. Again, yeah? You see which pawn now helps you to win the game? This pawn. If this pawn wasn't there, he goes king c7. Black is at least going to draw this game. Mm -hmm. So once again, we see. Once he allowed b6, that's it. Kramnik is going to win the game. And that's what happened. Very strong play by Kramnik. Uh, very methodical win and where he just, just improved his pieces. You know, every move and just... You know, it was under control the entire game. 7-7, seven, seven, 2000, again, it's 2014, uh, 2004 World Championship. And uh, it was Kramnik versus Leko again. Leko was just uh, half a game away, we can say, yeah? One game away from becoming a World Champion and never happened. This was, and since then he never had a chance. This was his chance. He was at the very end, he did win to win the candidate cycle and qualify there, but if I remember correctly, he defeated Topalov in a final match to get to this uh, moment. And Kramnik was the champion at that time. So very, very impressive win by Kramnik. And, uh, and uh, we see that he can play. He can play very well even under, under pressure, which is very difficult to do, even for a very strong players. When there is so much pressure, so many things online, and I mean, we're talking about world world championship title here. It was decided on this game, so it's very important to stay calm and try to play some good moves, which he did. He played really good game overall, put a lot of pressure, and uh, managed to win. Do you guys have any questions about this game? Was it pretty? You understand now this game? And if you want to find this game later on, this is game number 14. Okay, so if you want to look at it a little bit more in depth, this, so remember this is game number 14 from that title.